Say amen. amen. There's one more here. Shelly. Look at the word newly. It's going to have two references. Newly. How's everybody? I intend to be here at 7.30 and start teaching at 7.30. Just as I intend to be here at 1 o'clock on Sundays for the last three or four weeks and begin teaching at 1 o'clock. And the Lord told me that some of you all here some time. I said, okay. I said, how about the ones that don't owe you no time? He said, I can keep track of the ones that owe me time. I can sure keep track of the ones that are working overtime. That's why he talks to me sometimes when, you know, I was under my business. So this is about. I still think about that Godfather movie. When Michael's going to take over as the Godfather. And the old man kept saying, there's not enough time. We just, just had more time. Remember that? Anybody? He told his dad, he said, don't worry about it, Pop. We'll, we'll be all right. I'm telling the Lord then. And particularly on some subjects that I've never taught, and I feel like they should be taught. I'm going to tell you, I watch, you know, I watch games sometimes. In professional sports, they call it time management. In football, in particular, it was called the two minute drill. These are ways to win games when, when time is on the line and the clock needs to be an enemy or your friend, depending how well you execute your time management. But watching God perform in these last few weeks is like watching a professional with time management. He knows what he's doing. I mean, I was just, every attempt I made to get here tonight by 7.30, got thwarted. Then became a joke, like last week. And finally, I said, Lord, no, this is like, and I wouldn't have that kind of time. He said, we. He said, I invented time. Time is mine. He said, you don't know how much time you have in the your day. So if I give it to you, you got it after me, I know it's time that's left before you did. That makes sense. Then we look at the God, and we, I've pointed out so many times in, in Scripture, how God can write a verse and cover Vast amounts of time. In this one verse, he economizes words. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Do you know how much time is involved in that? One statement. And the earth is without, without form and void. How much time is involved in that statement? How many events went down? I mean, we, don't, we can't put a number on it. Best we can do... Call it the day this past. No date for it. Too far ago. Dinosaurs disappeared. Disappeared. 200. 50 million years ago. That's a long time. That's when they disappeared. How long would they run before they disappeared? And what was around before? Before that. And before that, and before that, I mean, somebody says that in the beginning they were, they were there already. What do you trace them back to? Your mind gets lost in the figuring, doesn't it? Your brain spins out. To be here, it calls himself the self existing one. And before anything was, I am. Like Colossians says, he is before all things. All things were made by him. I mean, when he, when he came, 
When he was around in the beginning, there were no stars, no plants, no nothing. There's no space. He made it. All things. Let that soak in. And he didn't come into, suddenly come into the world and, you know, there was no world. He himself was the world. Made by him, without him, it says, nothing exists that exists. That's incredible. So now I'm still pushing for, you know, what I said, Lord, like last week we read this message, this text, where he said we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. And I said, Lord, I had to, you know, differ with you, but we are. I said, you never taught us on his devices. You never spoke about it. He said, well, the first time I had to tell you about it, I did. He said, I haven't changed anything. To those within, it's what? Given. I'm going to give it to you, he said. I'm going to give you what you need. He said, I just give you that little bit about Satan because that's all you needed. So up to that time, you haven't needed anything about him. That's what I gave it to you. I came and explained. I had no idea what that explanation was. How we have three people giving a subject and nobody talks about it. Some, some, some spirit has to be there somewhere. What, how, and why? I asked God, you know, what, what made that happen? I just can't act like it didn't happen. What made it happen and how do we keep it from happening again? Then when he explained what, what, what went down, I was fully satisfied. He said, that's what happened. He said, oh, any more questions? That's at the gas station. That's what we're not, not really know. That implies you got some more, you know. I was afraid to ask at that point. I was minding that moving. Uh, Crimson Tide. There's a part in the movie where the captain tells Denzel, he said, that's why when I give a, give a command or read these these orders off. He said, you have to come right behind, right behind me. So the crew understands that, you know, we're together because that's doing unthinkable things. That one thing to know is that the captain and the XO are, are one on. Okay? And God said, why should I act different near the end? He said, you know, they would panic. He said, they would panic seeing you would get up at 7.30 to teach. All right? Those who come later said, oh, he's already teaching. What did I miss? And panic. And you would. He said, so, you know, I'm running things, so I'll get you there enough time to cover the class. I might have you get out at 8.30 and have set a whole mouthful. He didn't do that. Because it's 8.30. So, I said, well, Lord, what now? What, 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 what are the teacher? He said, I'll tell you. And he did. Walking in, he told me. Let me start back here in Second Thessalonians. Jesus often time made a statement. He said that I tell you before these things, and so when they happen, you already know. Whether it's good or bad. He told us about the division of families. Three against two. Two against three, way before it ever happened, at least in my case. Whereas I thought that was for somebody in the congregation. Didn't apply to me until God had it happen to me. In my life, that's what I learned. I learn tell you that every message God gives, you're going to meet that message. That's why He says Himself, He says, I rise up early. If it's going to be a tough case. God says, I get up early and tell you. Years in advance. That's got Jeremiah messed up in the head. Jeremiah said, I was deceived. Because God gave him a message about the Babylonians coming in, and it didn't happen for a very long time. So Jer- Jeremiah, you know, he felt, I understand where he's coming from. He said, I decided I'm not going to talk about it anymore about, in, in the Lord's name. I quit. And he's serious about it. But then he says, but you're stronger than me. And finding that, you know, I know you're going to make me do something I don't want to do. Because you got the kind of leverage. 
Then he said, I tried to stay quiet, and what happened? He said, it was like a fire inside of me, and I could not withhold. And he went on preaching about Babylon again. He said, he, said, he became, he, said, he became a, what do you call it? They were making songs, songs about him. He said, I was held in derision. He didn't want to go out anymore. Here's a joke, exactly. Somebody make up a song about you in your message that hasn't, that hasn't happened. The Lord said, that hasn't, that hasn't happened yet. He said, oh, I was going to. But he said, it hasn't happened yet. He said, it's rise up early, so early. Getting everybody ample time to respond to it that sometimes people think it's not going to happen. Whereby they'll say, as Peter said, where's the promise that was coming? Nothing's changed since the father's fell asleep while things continue as they are. And we can hear that now. Where's the promise? Some of you get nervous. Nothing's happening. If like the Lord's coming, something should be happening. Right? What did God tell us? What's going to happen? So that when we got these days where we feel like something should be happening, he already said, it's not going to be. So what do you do? Relax. Okay. It's going to be said it would. There are things throughout my saved life that the word of God says that I know then I anticipate they're going to come. They have to. Here's the text here where this event has to take place. It has to take place. Second Thessalonians 2. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. He's going to be something else. I mean, to actually see somebody come on, on, the, on the world stage and proclaim themselves to be greater than God. And oppose God. Literally oppose him. So that he as God. Sits in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. We've never seen anything like that before. Nothing. Close to it. Nothing. You see folks who divide God and like George Carlin. I'm sure you got some different ideas now. He's going to realize that they're really, they're, he really was. For real. A few fools. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart there is no God. You hear that from somebody? They're a fool. He says, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. He said, I told you before I left. He said, certain things are going to happen. Now he writes a letter to them. And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. You know what's holding back the Antichrist now. What was it, Paul? The church. For the mystery of iniquity that's already worked, meaning this one, this last day's one world government, and Satan taking charge of everything, he says, it was at work in Paul's day. The structure's being laid in Paul's day. It's just a matter of flipping the switch now. All the wiring's done, the light bulbs are put in, they're just flipping the switch. That's where the world's at right now. And it starts right now. And it can start today if they are able to. What's stopping them? One little item, one little detail, this church hasn't left yet. And that's holding back the power of Satan from just doing this whole thing. That's stopping this man from opposing God, but he's around. Now the Christ is alive. Full grown, ready to go. And it was no accident when Obama summoned forth a new spirit to take over things. Who's that new spirit? Antichrist. It's not Obama. He's not the Antichrist. He ain't got that much power. It's the Antichrist just calling forth. It's your time now. He summoned him forth. It's his time. For like God said that I'll build my, this church upon this rock. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. They had no reason to. We were never in, in the world's way before. Now Satan's ready to kick the doors in and prevail against the church. Since it hasn't left yet, then I'm going to destroy it. That's where we're at. And with the scenario that, you know, he said these things are written for our example upon whom the ends of the age will come. The scenario of Egypt, of Israel coming out of Egypt is going to be our scenario. He's going to take us to a certain point, expose us, and then say, go kill him. And just when he takes it all, he's going to set a part in the Red Sea. He's going to pull us out. Last minute. 
Egypt's army caught up to them in the dark. So they overtook them. And God said, if from the front of the camp, it's still between them. And that's where it is right now. It's the only thing keeping the forces back. On this side, when daylight comes, they're ready to break through, and whatever date they decided, that's when God will put another miracle and take us out of here. They don't believe in it at all. No, they don't believe in God. So they figure they got us. They, they got us. The church has been Satan's worst nightmare from day one. All right, that's why I said the church, we're, we're not on the defensive. We're offense. We take it to them. You know, so they, you resist him and he'll flee from you. That's how it's supposed to work. He's not giving us a spirit of fear or a timid spirit. You're to take the battle to him and put it in his face. Tell him to get out. Well, he's going to challenge you. But he's already judged, Jesus said. The God of this world is already defeated. He's already cast out. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He said, I saw his fall. He fell out of heaven like lightning. It was that quick. He said, he's gone. He said, he's already judged. It's like a serpent that's already dead and has his death throes. He's in his death throes. He's in, in, in the heavens. God has so pictured and so wired that in the zodiac, the dragon is the longest figure in the zodiac. That's about two thirds from the zodiac, and he's called the fleeing serpent. He's running. I mean, that's that's pretty. That's pretty. I want to say ballsy, but you know that's the wrong word. Fire shirts. But I couldn't think of any other rose. So. A lot of nerve to put a picture in stars in the heavens and display it and tell Satan, this is you. You're on the run. You don't do that unless, you, unless you're sure you won. A lot of confidence. Arrogant. To do a, put a picture there from Virgo right around to Leo and then make it happen. And have the same thing in the written word. I'm going to come through. I didn't think about my story coming. I have to go back to the scripture, God's word again. He says, the lower perfect that was concerns me. I don't know how. He went and told Abraham when Abraham was 99 years old. A promise that he had for 49 years, which is a period of time, as you know, for a Jubilee period. Then he said, by this time next year, in the 50th year, you know, I don't know how Abraham felt those last 49 years old. After all, it was just too late. After Hagar and that little episode, after that, it was just too late. He realized he couldn't have kids. I mean, he, he realized he was too old for Ishmael. Being a daddy at 78 ain't nothing easy. This is when he's 88. He's got to think that I missed the whole thing. And God passed me by on a promise. It's not going to happen to me. Now you're 98. It's hopeless. It's hopeless. You know, I just have to take, accept my fate, whatever it might be. But I definitely fail because... I don't have no sign. And now I'm, it's, too, it's, it's too much time going by. I can't have one now. And here comes who shows up. Three guys. When he's 99. Remember that promise made to you 49 years ago? I'm not going to break my promise. I'm going to keep my word. My claim to fame is I keep my promises. What he promised you, eternal life. He's going to keep that promise. In spite of you. In spite of me. He's going to come through. On time. I will raise up at the last day, he said. Over and over again. And I'm going to raise him up at the last day. What are you going to do, God? The last day. Quit worrying about it. Quit being anxious and worried. At the last days, he who keeps his promises, who, who, with Abraham, it says that he, in keeping his promise to him, he made a promise with himself. So he couldn't swear by anybody greater than him. So what he do? He swore by himself. He stood between him and himself and his word. He said, and blessing I will surely bless thee. And multiplying, I will surely multiply thee. I'll back in my own self. He said, for men, that's the end of all strife. And you say you promise. By two immutable things, by an oath and the fact that he can't lie. All these things are given for our admonition to us. This, I mean, you know, you have to realize that all the great events of, the, of, of time immortal are all converging together now. The coming of the Lord. The putting of Satan in the pit, the resurrection of the dead. I mean, what better time is it to be alive in now? This is it. This is it. And God has chosen us to be a part of this. Nobody's, nothing's failures. 
the weak ones and the despised ones chose us. Chose us. And that is the last minute, but before the foundation of the world, picked you out already. Knowing your whole life in advance, I picked you out. I mean, he gave us the consolation of Esau and Jacob. He said, I, I, I love Jacob. What's going to change that? Nothing can change it. I, my, my mystery still is how did God love in the first place? He said, and Esau hated. Then he said, when? He said, before they were born. Before they had done any good or any evil. He said, I don't love them or hate them based on what they did. Based on what they did, they're all sinners. He said, I love them because I could. Because I wanted him. I wanted him to be my son. So I loved him. He said, I didn't want him. I hated him. Now it turns out, as usual, God is right. <laughs> had a reason to hate, 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 hate Esau. And had a reason to love Jacob. The reason to love Jacob didn't come to the end of Jacob's life. When Jacob's still being old, oh, deceitful Jacob, and sending his family ahead to meet Esau with these presents, you know, 10,000 sheep and 5,000 camels and all kinds of stuff to soften his heart up. I mean, you give gifts to people in, in a bad way with them. It helps. You know, your boss, you know, you, you, you need to come to the doghouse. It, it's nothing wrong to bring him a little gift, you know. It would appear like, you know, as if you're, you know, brown only. But it's okay to give a little gift. He gave all kind of gifts, and he stayed behind. He sent his wife and kids ahead of him. That's as hard as you get. He's finally left alone. The angel came down. And they got into a fight. He realized that this was just, not just a man, this was an angel. He told that angel, he says, the angel said, let me go. He says, the, 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 the daylight was coming. The angel said, let me go. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. This man's already blessed. This is the offer he sent to Esau, so he says, he's blessed. He understood that in this part of his life, there's more to a blessing than things. He said, I'm going to real blessing. He said, finally, finally, the angel asked him, what's your name? To get blessed, I've got to admit what we are. He said, Jacob. I'm sure when he said it, everything about Jacob and what that name meant hit him like a ton of bricks. Then he responds to him and says, your name shall be called Esau. I'm sure it shall be called Israel. A prince who has power with God. And he touched him on the thigh, and then he, he walked away from that fight, limping, leaning, leaning upon his staff. He leaned upon the staff the rest of his life. Went to Egypt, leaned upon his staff. Talked to Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked him about his life. He said, I'm, I have not attained to the years of my fathers. He said, Grandpa Abraham lived to be 175 years old. He said, my daddy, 185 years old. He said, I'm only 130. It's about time for him to die. He said, my, my, my days have been few and full of trouble. Full of trouble. And, and, they, and they were. Most of them like us brought upon him by himself. But they're still full of troubles. And then he, he dies. But it says he died leaning upon his staff. The Lord. He died leaning upon the Lord. God broke him. He's in the business of breaking us. That's why things that go through are so tough sometimes because God is in the business of breaking our will and breaking us to make us usable for him. For the mystery of iniquity has already worked. Only he who now letteth, this word means what? Hindereth, will hinder until he be taken out of the way. That he is what? Church. And then shall that wicked one be revealed. He's called the wicked. Not, not the wicked one. I, I read it wrong. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Capital letters. Capital W. It's, 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 a, it's a personality. Whom the Lord shall consume. Here we go. This is one of his verses. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. You know how many years he, he passes by and events he passes by in that one little statement? He goes to the end of seven year tribulation. He'll be destroyed at the end of that. In one verse, he goes from his appearing to his destruction. Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan. Satan see. He'll come with all power, all signs. See why God hates signs? Because the Antichrist is going to come with signs and wonders. That's why God has been preaching to us against it all the time. Take my word, you don't need a sign. He'll come with signs and lying wonders. He won't come with any truth. That's the absent of that list. And with all deceiver ones, let that little line sink in. With all ability, any kind of way to deceive, he'll have it. With all deceivableness. Nothing in his world and his world will be what it seems to be. 
Everything will be a lie, painted up with all deceitfulness. It'll be something you can believe. He's gonna be, he's, he's gonna have it all. He's gonna be, he's the equivalent of Satan's masterpiece where Jesus was to God. Except in wickedness and evil. All deceitfulness and then the perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. For, and for this cause, it goes back to God's word every time. It hasn't changed. That's why he said over and over again. He doesn't have the ear to hear. Let him hear with the spirit such as the churches. Because for this cause, because they didn't hear, God shall send them strong delusion. That has to happen before the rapture. You get it? A lot of things are in basis, it's like as God said, these things here, there's been a whole list of things that God has given us in a lifetime that had to take place in our life. You should have persecution and tribulation because of the word. Has it happened to you? Over and over again. All the things he said had to come to pass. Well, this does too. When? Within the next few weeks. He starts to relax. Hard to do. Does he know? Uh, do you know what you're about to do? <laughs> or are you aware of what you have to do? I'm just throwing the illusion thing, but he, so many times he says, he says his word, and I understand why now. He says, and this should be done in a day. He don't need no more time than that. In a day. God can make events of biblical proportions occur, several of them, in a day. In a day. Something's going to happen, and keep your ears open for it. That's what he told you about it. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Some people have a problem with that. They think that, you know, that's, that's not right of God. That God lets them make things so they'll believe a lie. He gave the truth first, though. And those who have his truth and continue his word, they cannot be deceived by this strong delusion. They'll know what's coming from. They say, well, that's God doing a strong delusion. He said he's going to do it. And they'll watch, the, they'll, they'll watch the other church panic and the terrorists panic because they don't understand this. And we'll sit back and watch what's happening. Say, wow. Come back, come to Bible class tonight. Everybody, did, did y'all, did y'all, wow. <laughs> no, I, I, won't, I have no idea. I know that whatever the strong illusion is, is going to have something to do with creation. And they're going to come down and prove their point that they're your gods to, it's going to make those who are stable kind of shake a little bit. And those who don't have his word, it may go into the joy services and the, the shouting services and the blessing services and looking for signs and wonders. They are easy prey. They're going to take them out, take them out and shh, just like that. Because their religion came from Satan. He's already in the church. That's why he told us in advance that he's going to be in the first church, took away the love for the truth. Second truth, he put a synagogue there. Third church, he told us the whole thing. How many times did he tell us that? Over and over again. Now at that time, these things have to happen. Or he's a liar. And he's not. He's not. Who's going to get involved in this? That they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, who had pleasure in unrighteousness. He said, I'm going to take, take this professing church out. What did he say in the Revelation? I'm going to spew it out of my mouth. He said, why? It's made me sick. I'm going to vomit it out. How are you going to do it, God? With a delusion. Because they're already following an illusion. And been following one for some time. So I'm going to delude them. I'm going to let this lie go forth. It's like that, that demon when they try to persuade Ahab to go up to Remus Gilead and fight. He said, how are you going to do it? He said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. God, God, God asked him, how are you, you going to do it? He said, I got a plan. I'm going to his prophets and just be a lying spirit. And God said, go ahead. Was that wrong? No, no, the truth is out there. And the ones going to buy that lie would be the ones who don't know the, know the truth. That's why he said, continue my word, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free from all this stuff coming down. So it'll be done. Is that great? I mean, to actually live out these things and see them happen in your lifetime? That's incredible. Turn to John. First John, last chapter.
chapter 5, verse 9. I'll get verse, verse 8, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear record on earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of man, of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He said, God gave a witness in the Bible. God went on a witness stand and swore to tell the truth, hope to know the truth about his son. He went on, he, he made it, he, he went on record. He put a record down. What's his record? The Old Testament. That's his record. That's your proof text. So if you're a saint, what do you do? Try to get the church not to believe the Old Testament. Create New Testament churches. Write New Testament Bibles. Get them out of the Old Testament because the record is there. Ain't no shouting stuff there. Nothing emotional, just a record of God about his son that you can go to and verify that his son is who he said he is because God went on record. Look at it. What verse was in? Nine. He that, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. That's you and I. You believe the witness is in you. He that believeth not God hath made a liar. Who a liar? God. You're calling God a liar. He that believeth not is calling God a liar to his face. Why? It says, because he believeth not that the record of God gave his son. Guess that went on the record. On the oath. About my son. You don't believe my son, then you're calling me a liar. And you ought to go to hell. That's your creator. I mean, that's probably the, the, that's probably the, the easiest punishment he can, he can meet out. Probably the easiest thing he can do for you. This is how you, how you go to hell. I can't uncreate you. You're a spirit. Made in his image after his likeness. Eternal. So you got to deal with the spirit. Okay, I'll throw it into a trash can. Turn to Deuteronomy. This is why it's so imperative that you hear God's voice and only God's voice. What's going to come through me? Like it's been doing. I don't know if I think in the last days I'm going to you know, hold, on, hold on to something with you. And I'll tell you all the mysteries are out that God is selling me. Why would I do that? Well, you know, like, that's, that's Satan's line. You know, God knows that the day you eat there, huh? That's what I keep saying. When somebody comes to you all the time about, about what they get out of the message, be wary. Be wary. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing that everybody else got the message. There shouldn't be a special revelation to somebody in a message. It don't happen, not from God. It doesn't happen. When God speaks, he's spoken. Anything else beyond that? Again, back to your original question from January, how do you convince 600,000 that they didn't believe and hear God's voice? Because they heard a voice. And they believe the voice. Just when God's, although God's voice is out there already, they chose to listen to somebody else. That's how, that's how he does it. It's slick. And here's, here's what's going to modify things. Why it's more dangerous today. He said that, that even when the seducers, so acts worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay? Hold that thought. Deuteronomy 32. This is, this is the same chapter, I think, for the first time where the word faith comes in. Might be in the same context, I don't know. Find the word faith here in verse, in, verse, in verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. He's talking about his, his own people. Okay? Now let's go and get the verses before then. See what, what made him this way. 15. The gesture waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. 
for a false doctrine to come out, then the, 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 the real Christ has to be brought down a little bit and become lightly esteemed. They provoked him to jealousy. Look at this. With strange gods. Let me tell you something. And, and, and the, the image God brought me tonight was just, it was horrifying. The number of strange gods appearing on the scene is astronomical. They're here for the final show. The final show is to take this church out. What's they going to do? Unleash everything he got. Everything. Everything. All deceitfulness is coming out now. It's all against his word, but it's going to sound like the truth unless you know the truth. Look at this. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Came newly up from where? The bottom parts of the earth. They come up. They're coming up. They're coming up by the, by the girls that I'm speaking. They're coming up now with new doctrines. This sound great. Last days, I mean, you're, you're Satan. You, you, you in the wind. What do you do? At least everything I got. Are God's real? Yeah, they're real. You're real. That's why he said, don't make any multiple images of these gods. That's why know the God before me. If there weren't any other gods besides him, why say, don't have them before me? They were there. They were real. What's that scripture? You find that one for me? About judging the gods of Egypt? No, I have that. Oh, 12, 12. Turn next to 12, 12. Okay, thanks. And I preached this before, you should remember it. Look at this one. For I passed through the land of Egypt this night, got it? And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. God said to you first, to understand that this is a real, a real judgment taking place, okay? I'm going to go through it and kill the firstborn, okay? Both man and beast, and against, he's saying what? I'm going to execute judgment and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I'm the Lord. What are you talking about? Some of somebody's mind? It's not real gods. Real gods occupied Egypt. The powers of Egypt. Real gods. He said tonight, you know, well, I, well, I guess, don't think that sometimes because God's got you in a, in, in like in a trap, that he's like, you know, forgot about you. He put you in what seemed like a trap to us. It was a place of shelter for them. Between the Red Sea and the canyon was their shelter place. He hid them there. They told, they told Pharaoh, okay, they're down there. This, they're hidden there by the canyon, and the Red Sea's in front of them. They can't know where to go. go. This is after he finds his, his firstborn born son is dead. What can that do you have? In his own army. Anybody in his army had children and son. His firstborn son is dead. What are you going to go down there for? To wipe out some folks. Right? You don't want them back to slaves no more. There's nothing to be slaves over anymore. I mean, their whole land was decimated. There's nothing green in Egypt anymore. They can't, they can't find straw to make bricks because there's no straw. All they have is dust. You're going to learn to kill them. But God's hiding them. It's not while you're, while you're there. I'm right back, huh? He looked down there and went back to Egypt and killed the firstborn. They said, and I got some vengeance executed against the gods down here. The God who, who thinks he owns the Red Sea. Because they're going to let us cross. He got to get taken out. The God of the canyons who thinks he's going to hit him down here. He's got to get taken out. There were gods on patrol. This is their territory. This is their turf. It's like that old story. Billy Goes Gruff, what was it? And the mean troll. So you won't cross? Yeah. Same, same, a, lot, a lot of truth in that story. Okay, but... You know, these, these guys are saying you won't cross. So what do you do, God? I had to go take them out first. Just stay there. That's why that's like Moses said, you know, fear not, stand still and fear not, and see the salvation of the Lord. That's where we're about to get to the point where we think that we're in jeopardy, but God is actually hiding in a place while he does his, his number. He's working on your behalf. He's going to stop. He's been working this event of the church since that's his only thing that's preoccupying his time and mind and energy. Since Jesus never came, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. What's he been doing since that day, 2,000 years ago? Preparing a place. Whatever the laws, whatever God that means eliminated, I'm doing that. I'm making your place sure. Where is in the way? I'm taking it out. That's what he's been doing. He's been idle. Plus the duties of being a high priest. I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't, you know. <laughs> not, not in the virus in the day. 
24-7 being a high priest. And me, I'm knocking these little gods out, okay? <laughs> All these guys who joined forces. To, 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 they know about the rapture coming. We're going to stop this thing. That's why it said when he got from the grave, it said he took the ones out of, out of Hades with him and he showed himself openly and made open to spare them and passed through him with his whole bunch of captives that have been set free. And what, 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 what do the demons do? All they do is watch them. Empty out the whole turret, the whole compartment of hell. Empty it out. I got the keys to hell. He's got the grace of what? All power in heaven and earth is given to me. All of it. What power did you have before? That power over the grave and Satan. Got that now. Got the keys to death and hell. They're mine. I said, folks, free. Can you imagine how those spirits look when you came down there? So, so, so does man walk in? Did nobody, nobody bother? It said, where's that section there where my folks are locked up? Uh oh. Goes over there. It tells them, lift the gates up. Lift up your gates. And they come up. Well, it was. So the King of Glory is down here. Yeah. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Stop me if you can. Is that great? Offering time. Lord's good. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. See what all God, see what all God can see in, in, in 35 minutes? Only God can do that. The grace of God, Lord, again, we thank you for just being who you are and being faithful and consistent to your word, O oh Lord. You've been faithful to us, O oh God, also. You've been giving us things and taking care of us, meeting our needs. You asked for a tenth back, that's yours. You said also to bring an offering to you. Lord, we can't begin to bring an offering that's, that's worthy, so you're satisfied for us to bring what we could. So, yes, O oh God, you're blessed that we can park and multiply in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.